All right, guys, welcome to this Google Hangout. This is Dexter Henry for NetsDaily.com. I'm joined with Mason Plumley, rookie of the Brooklyn Nets. He's had a pretty good rookie season so far, averaging 6.2 points per game, 3.3 rebounds, and he's at the All-Star Weekend, participated in the Rising Stars Challenge last night. Mace, first question for me to you is, how was, how was that playing in the Rising Stars Challenge last night? What was that like? It was a lot of fun, and um, from having watched the games before our game, I thought it was one of the better Rising Stars games that they've had. Um, the, you know, really, they get going about the last five minutes, it gets competitive, but I felt, I felt like the last ten minutes of our game yesterday was really good. Yeah. Down to a couple possessions, so that's all you can really ask for in those games. Yeah, it's pretty exciting from what I saw, and uh, you had 20.7 rebounds, four steals. Uh, you did a really good job there. One of the questions we had from our fans that I'm going to throw out right here is, what was it like playing against your brother in that game? That's what everybody wants to know. What was that experience like? You no, know, it was fun because there was a little more freedom. When we played Phoenix early in the season, I think we were on the floor for about a minute or two together. So um, to have extended minutes out there, it made it more fun. Yeah, most most definitely. What what else have you enjoyed thus far about the uh, All-Star experience down in New Orleans? Man, there's um... – you know, it's just the, the best players in the game are all down here. There's events, there are parties, there are a lot of things to do off the court, and it's really just um, celebrating um, or being being recognized and being able to celebrate that. So the game obviously was fun. Um, we play first, so we get to enjoy the rest of the weekend. The, the older guys they play last, so um, I don't know. It's, it's been a good it's been a good time. I've really enjoyed it, and I hope to be a part of it in the future. Cool. Let's go into uh, some of the, the fan questions here. You ready, ready for what the fans have to ask you? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it. So first question, this is this is like straight to the point from one of these fans. From Pink Panther JR, one of the fans on Nets Daily, he asked, who's better, Mason or Miles? So it's putting you right on the spot. Who's better? Who's a better player? Well, all we can go off of is uh, last night, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, last night's a strong case for you. You had 20 uh, points, uh, seven boards. Your brother didn't have as many points to rebound, so... Whenever we have to answer that question, I just go off of what has happened lately. So for the right. time being, until we play him again, I'll take bragging rights. And then All I'll right. take him right back if he outplays me. There, there you go. Got another one from, this is one of my Twitter followers, Mike King, double zero. He asked, who were your favorite players growing up? Oh, who favorite your players growing up? Um, the first final series I remember watching was the Jazz and the Bulls, the Carl Malone, John Stockton, Michael Jordan. Um, I was about six years old then. And then since then, um, and there are a lot of guys. I, You know, it sounds crazy, but I watched Kevin Garnett a lot. Mm. And I'm playing with them, so, um, you know, that's, that's crazy to, to think of that. But um, I really liked his game. Um, you know, there have been a lot of good players that I've, I've looked up to, but he's definitely one of them. Another another question from Mike was between you and your brother, who won the one and one games when you guys were growing up? How did those backyard, those, backyard battles go? Back and forth all the time. People always ask us that. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Marshall, Marshall didn't win them. <laughs> we, he was kind of so far down or so far removed in age that he never really had a chance. But me and Miles went back and forth a lot. Nice. Uh, another question from Aaron91 off Nets Daily. He asked, in what ways did Coach K – Prepare both you and your brother for the NBA game. I think uh, coach's work habits, if you just watch him throughout a season, he does things um, to keep himself fresh. You know, even the college season is a long season. When you start, um, you really start as soon as the first uh, session of summer school starts. So even though it's not 82 games, it is a long season. And his work habits, his ability to stay fresh and um, – you know, he would, like, rejuvenate himself within a season. Um, I think that's that's something that I've thought back on and um, tried to apply to this season because game-wise and practice-wise, this has been the longest season I've been through. Good, an good answer there. You spoke a little about how KG was one of the favorite players of yours growing up. I have a question from Alec Namaroff. Sorry if I pronounced his name wrong. He asked, how has KG made an impact on you this season? He's been great, man. Um, you know, I'm really fortunate to be – um, a rookie on this team and with him and with not just him but also Paul and Jet and Darren and Joe and those guys but KG in particular um, I was actually just talking to Jared Sullinger who was on my team um, we're in agreement like he's the he's the best vet you could have as a rookie just as far as showing you 
what you have to do to have a long career in this league, if you want to take your game to the next level, what you have to do, how you have to take care of your body. Um, you know, you learn something every day. I'm in the locker room with him. I'm either being reminded of something that he's already taught me or I'm learning something new. So um, I'm very fortunate to be on, on his team. Def definitely. KG brings a lot of intensity, as, uh, as I see, and a lot of the fancy. Um, one of the other questions we have here from Jay Garcia is a lot of a lot of questions here about you and your brother, comparisons between both of you guys. Who's a better dunker, you or Miles? He's probably the better. I'll give him the better dunker. He uh, has to hire at the combine and the vertical, and he's had a he's had a few more dunks on people this season, so I'll give him that. Nice. All right, so you give him that. That's that's not based on recent performance. It has nothing to do with uh, last night. Uh, another question from Megan L. Who were your biggest inspirations while beginning your basketball career? Definitely my dad. Um, you know, he he was he always played. Both my parents played, but my dad really loved the game. And uh, my mom, she could have cared less. She played it in college, and she was done with it. But my dad, I remember watching him play when I was a little kid. And, um, you know, he really loved to play, so he I really looked up to him. Nice. Um Another question we have uh, for you, just going through some other stuff, there's some repeat stuff. A lot, a lot of people want to know about KG. Um, if the NBA started, this is a good question, if the NBA started a 2 on 2 brothers pickup type event for All-Star Weekend, which pair of brothers would you love to play against? Uh, for example, Lopez, Twins, the Teague brothers, uh, Zeller, which, which pair of brothers would you guys like to play against? I don't. Don't want to go against the Lopez brothers because they are <laughs> big as hell. Don't want to go against the Teagues because they're too quick. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the Zellers. Very, very nice. I think that'd be a good matchup uh, that uh, people would would like to see. Um, this was a question uh, for you as well too. Somebody wanted to know. This is from IAH725 or Net Scaly. Uh, shout out to that person. What is it like for NBA players to read through their Twitter feed and see oh my gosh. Up themselves? Yeah, what's that like? Because I even wonder that. Like, what's it like for the NBA player to see rumors about self trade rumors, anything on their Twitter feed? That's, that's, a, that's a good question. Honestly, the first I will say the first trade rumor, I called my agent right away. I said, "What's going on?" <laughs> Figure out what's going on, and uh, that's what a lot of that stuff is. It's a lot of rumors. But as far as just the timeline, you get. You get one of three things. You get like the positive re encouragement or good job, you know, big fans, whatever, the support. Then you get the people, it doesn't matter win, lose, draw, they're going to hate you. They're going to tell you how bad you are, how ugly you are. You get all that, all the negative. And then you got the people who think they know it all. And I'll get like lengthy Instagram posts, Twitter posts about how how I should play, how coach should coach, how, you know, the people just have, they have all the answers. So they tend to, honestly, I block them before I block the people that just <laughs> hate me. Because I can understand if you just don't like me, but if you think you know everything, I can't I can't put up with that. There you go. Mason telling you guys out there what he can't deal with. So <laughs> it, social media can be a gift and a curse, Mason, sometimes. It's a, it's a interesting to play with. But to some more questions. Got some good questions from one of our Nets Daily re uh, Readers. Glue guy, he's asking some stuff about the net, so I'm, I'm going to have some fun with this with you. First question he asks, who is the locker room DJ, and what's the most played song in the Brooklyn Nets locker room? Um, well, unfortunately, to start the season, it was Tyshawn, but he's not with us anymore. Mm. I would say it goes be back and forth between Andre Blatch and Reggie Evans. Oh, and man. Reggie's going to play the, the Deep South rap, and Andre... Andre's all over the place. He could play Chris Brown one day. He could play Eminem the next. You just you don't know what's coming with Dre. But um, I would say the, the favorite song recently, everybody was listening to Paranoid. I don't know who sings it, but um, okay. So yeah. everybody's everybody's vibing to that. Yeah. Cool. All right. New to me, like a lot of times, the first time I hear the song is in the locker. <laughs> okay, well the locker room's putting you on to new music, so that that's always good. Sure. Another question from Blue Guy. This, this is getting really into the net locker room, May. So, who is the worst dressed net? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say yourself. I hope not. No, worst dressed. 
man. Dre's the most ambitious dresser. He thinks he can pull off anything. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. As far as just worst dress, man. See, and I'm going through this in my mind because I've seen you guys in the locker room, so now yeah. I'm thinking about it too. And I, I'm, I, I'm just a tough one. This All right, dude. All right, I'll do this. You tell me who you think it is, and I'll tell you. Wow, right. Mace put me on the spot. Who I think is the worst desk? I'll say this much. The other night, this was after the Charlotte game. Uh, Joe Johnson had some interesting red pants on. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> yes, it looked like cross colors from back in the '90s. Uh, urban wear that everybody used to wear. So, but I won't call him the worst dress. Most times he's been dressed. Everybody in the Nets dress is pretty nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you want to skip on that? You want to skip on that question? Yeah, I, no, I wouldn't say worse. I say people give Brooke a hard time because he has his go-tos. Like he has a couple go-to shirts and a couple mm-hmm. go-to pants, and they start rotating real fast, and you see him a lot. So <laughs> I think people would say him, but it's not necessarily. He's not a bad dresser. He just likes to wear the same thing a lot. Fair, fair, fair enough there. And this is a la- another question from Blue Guy. That's kind of about the team locker room. Well, what is personal ones about the team? First part of the question is, what is your pregame meal, Mace? And then, are there any strange pregame meals from your teammates? Um, well, if anybody follows Gary Sussman on Twitter, um, I have to make PB and J for the whole team before the game. So, um, naturally, I make one for myself, and then that's been my pregame meal. Um, guys, mix it up though. I mean, we'll be some places they'll get the order from the the menus in the, from the restaurants in the facility or in the arena. But nobody has, like, peanut butter and jelly is the only thing that, like, some guys, they absolutely have to have it before each game. Okay. That's cool. That's interesting. I actually didn't even know that. PB&J before, before the games. All right. I've got another question from uh, Aaron91 again. He said, he considers you to be extremely coachable. How much do you think your knowledge of the game has increased because of all the veteran players on the roster? And also... How has Jason Kidd and his staff helped your game this season? Well, um, you know, the NBA is a totally different game. So initially it was like you, you feel like you know a lot about the game coming out of college. You spent four years in college. And it's, there's a relearning process, and um, it's just different. I don't, I don't know how to put my finger on it, but there's a lot that's different about the NBA game. And um, having the group that we have of vets has been, um, been very helpful because they remind me, uh, quick and often and and loudly if I <laughs> if I'm not uh, up to speed so I don't think without them it would happen as fast as it has but um, and I'm still learning I'm still I still make mistakes and stuff but they're they're on top of me and and Jason I think they've made Jason's job easier because um, sometimes they're telling me what I need to hear before he even has to deal with me so I think he appreciates it too cool uh, gonna go back to some more, a little bit of personal stuff with you. What's your favorite movie of all time? This is from NJNBKN on Nets Daily. What's your favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie. Um, I like movies. I don't have one in particular, but I like movies with twists at the end. I like, like uh, Snatch, Lucky Number Eleven, Inside Man. I like a movie where you're watching, think you have it all figured out, and then at the very end, it, there's a turn or a twist, and you just didn't see it coming. Nice. Those those are some those are some good ones there. Um, it, what about you? I know you talked about some of the music in the locker room, but this uh, same person also asked, what kind of music do you like to listen to before the game? You know, maybe throwing your headphones, or what do you like to listen to before the game? Well, in the locker room, we have I have to carry the boombox for the team, so. We just play music on the boombox, so I just listen to where everybody else is. But um, in my free time, I like to relax, honestly. So I listen to more um, like John Mayer, John Legend, uh, R&B. I like like Chris Brown, Rihanna, those type of people. Um, and then I do like Kanye a lot. I'm a big fan. More more old school Kanye. Me too. <laughs> recent was a little over the top, but I like him. Nice. Good. Um, since you talked about the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and I saw this from uh, Mike King, double O, one of our Twitter followers, what other rookie duties do you have during this first part of the season besides making PB&J sandwiches? I've been asked that a lot. The ones I could tell you about, right. uh, just running a lot of errands, uh, going to pick stuff up for guys at inconvenient hours. Um, PB&J... 
carrying bags. Um, I don't know. Errands, a lot of stuff falls under running errands. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff to do, but um, just get towels for guys after practice. Um, you know, I haven't been, bring cards on the plane. You have to have cards all the time. Um, you just get, you kind of, different guys have different um, things that they want before the before and after games. Always have to bring the soap. Always have to bring the drinks on the bus. Um, there's just a lot of little things that I can't even think of think of them right now, but I just do them naturally because when I don't, I hear about it. So, sounds like they have you working really hard there. Definitely. <laughs> All right. I don't know if I don't know if you like to cook mace, but one of the questions asked this is actually by my, my co host on many of the videos we do on Nets Daily, Tom Lorenzo. He asked, who's the better chef, yourself or your brother? I don't think anybody wants to eat either of us. <laughs> Is uh, it that bad? Yeah, I, I mean, I could do breakfast a little bit. But I would say, I don't know, maybe Miles has picked something up in Phoenix, but I can't cook at all. <laughs> well, at least we know you know how to make some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. At least, yeah. at least we know that. We know, yeah. we know that. Jason Kidd says, I know how to paint the... Paint the jelly and the peanut butter on. <laughs> That's good. Um, this is a question for you by Tina Tu from Nets Daily. He asks, I'd like to know what you think has been the key to turning around the Nets season in 2014 and what they what you guys can do to continue to do it. Well, I think the biggest thing, just strategically, once Jason K went with the smaller lineup, mm. I think the ball started playing really well. Mears has started playing really well. And it really opened stuff up for all of our perimeter players. Where they're getting more open looks, more um, open lanes to the basket. I think it's made us harder to guard on offense. I think, um, you know, there still there still needs to be some. I don't know what it is, but um, we have to figure out another way to make another jump like that. Um, coming back after All Star break, because there are some teams that we should be beating that um, we struggle with a little bit. Definitely. Uh, I'm going to take some more. we got a couple more minutes, guys. I uh, want to thank everybody for joining in, all the fans from Nets Daily. Uh, everybody's checked in on this. Got a couple more questions for Mason here. Uh, Mason, uh, another question I have for you here from Alec Namara. Sorry, I was about to get his name wrong. He's asking you. I think I asked that question already, so I'm going to go through something else. Um, it's a lot of stuff that are similar, similar and the same. Uh, here we go. Here's one from Annette Santiago. Um, what do you think about the Nets' chances come playoff time? You guys are currently at the, in the seventh spot. Uh, you have an opportunity to move up, guys, as high as three. What do you think about the Nets' chances come this spring? Um, we are built for the playoffs. I'm not – if you talk to anybody in our locker room, we aren't concerned as much with the, the seeding as we are with just getting there while we're hitting our stride and while we're healthy. I feel like um, we have a group of guys who have won championships – have gone deep in, in the playoffs, have made good playoff runs, and once once you step on the floor for those playoff games, I can guarantee you there's going to be no um, question in their mind of, regardless of who we're playing against, who's going to win the game, or who they expect to win the series. And um, you get that feeling just talking to guys in the locker room and, and what they've been through. They, I don't want to say that the regular season is not important, but this team was put together for the playoffs. De de definitely. I mean, that's a goal. I think a lot of Nets fans themselves are excited for the playoffs and uh, what's what's coming up there in the future. Uh, we have another question from Cigar Patel. Uh, this is regarding KG, Mace. KG is known to talk trash. Yes, we all know that. What's the funniest or meanest thing that he's ever said to you? To me? <laughs> I, can't, I can't say that. I, I, fig I figured I'll, you I'll could. Say, I'll tell you a story. I, there's, there's so many. I could... We could do 20 minutes on stuff he said. <laughs> um, one that I heard that was pretty funny is um, Paul was telling me there was a young guy in Boston who was talking trash. He initiated the trash talk. Hmm. And I guess Kevin looked at Paul, and he wouldn't acknowledge him. He said, Paul, he said, tell this kid, don't talk to me until you have 1,000 points or at least 500,000 in your bank account. <laughs> <laughs> That's and cold. Until then, until then, tell him don't talk to me. <laughs> I like, I like that. You have, you gotta earn your respect before you can come. At you, and that's not just it. That's all the best. They put you in your place real quick, like coming out of college. And I knew this going into it, and I still found myself like biting my lip. Don't say anything. You know these guys. 
is one of the greatest of all time. You don't you don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think you learned well. This is gonna be my last question before we uh, wrap things up here. This is from BB Fan five one one seven on Nets Daily, and this is just about coming to Brooklyn. You've been in Brooklyn for a couple of months now, Mays back in the NYC area. He asked, "What's the toughest part about adjusting to such a large metropolitan area after having been playing in Duke for so long?" Traffic, no question. I spent so much time in traffic on the way to practice, shoot around games. Um, but I, I've adjusted to it. Um, I just leave a lot earlier, but I'm still not. I still don't enjoy sitting in traffic for, you know, hour a day. Nah, I hear, I hear you on that. Like a half hour going to practice, it'll be a half hour, forty five minutes coming back. It's 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 different. <laughs> Uh, I, I can totally, I can totally understand that. So, Mesa, it's safe to say you've enjoyed your time in Brooklyn this far. You like being in that? Oh, I absolutely, yeah, I love it. Um, you know, I feel so fortunate I, the way the trade happened and who we have there now on draft night. Um, you know, it was, it was a little surreal because we were at the Barclays Center. I hadn't worked out for the Nets. They weren't even a team that, in my mind, leading up to the draft, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool if? And it, also, you didn't know they would have KG, Paul, and Jet. So. Um, like I said, I couldn't have predicted it, but since it's happened, I'm I'm so happy that I'm there, and I hope to be there for a long time. Well, we're we're, gl we're glad to have you here, Nets Daily. We're glad to have you here to, to cover you. I know a lot of Nets fans are excited about you. They're always telling me on Twitter that you deserve more playing time. Um, we'd like to see you out there more. Uh, thank you for joining. Any last thing you want to say to the fans? Um, you guys have been great. We're definitely going to need you guys going down this home stretch, and then come playoff time. We need the Barclays Center to be louder than it's ever been. I'm sure it will be. There you go. We're gonna we're gonna be there too. Hopefully we have the Barclays Center rocking with some more dunks from you, Mace. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, enjoy the rest of the All Star Weekend down in New Orleans. The weather shows a lot better than it is here. So uh, enjoy that. Take care, man. I'll see you when you get back to Brooklyn after the road trip. Thanks, guys. Take care.